my interview with uh, Bangalore Atheist uh, Dr. Bandari. Uh, since you are one of the prominent uh, rationalists in India, uh, we are uh, doing this uh, interview with you. Sir, uh, my first question is uh, for those of us who uh, don't know uh, Dr. P.V. Bandari, uh, could you uh, introduce yourself to, to the audience? Okay, uh, I am a psychiatrist. Uh, I'm, I practice at a hospital called as uh, A.V. Badiga Memorial Hospital. Yeah, this is in a place called Udupi. Uh, Udupi is a district headquarters. And uh, basically, I have been practicing from 1999 uh, till now. Uh, uh, I was associated with the government hospital Udupi and uh, uh, also, uh, CSI Lombard Memorial Hospital would be, these were the previous hospitals where I worked. And uh, my interest in uh, uh, rationalism or uh, humanism as such uh, started uh, very recently, I can say in the last uh, four or five years. And uh, I would say I, I got, uh, uh, what do you say, attracted uh, uh, to this particular uh, humanism uh, Mainly after I started uh, interacting with uh, Sri Narendra Naik, uh, because uh, he is uh, the person uh, who actually uh, who has been conducting a lot of uh, seminars and also workshops for uh, school children. So, yeah, I think it coincided. Like I was getting a bit uh, disillusioned with the happenings in and around me. So during that time, I started uh, reading more about uh, Narendra Naik and his work and also participated in a seminar uh, he organized for school children uh, at a place called as uh, Indrani English Medium School. Uh, actually, I wanted to meet him for some other issue. So when I went there, I just uh, was uh, really, I would say, uh, I really felt uh, very good, something very useful somebody is doing that is to inculcate uh, scientific temper so i would say i'm quite uh, uh, I, I am a novice i just uh, in the last uh, uh, four or five years i started uh, uh, getting uh, more into this and of course uh, in uh, even earlier if you asked me i had uh, i had uh, belief in uh, god in fact, uh, even now, if you look at my chamber, so many gifts I have received from my patients. Usually, you know, it is God's, uh, this one, I have kept it. But I was quite, uh, like, uh, what do you say, against the superstition and uh, also against uh, pseudoscience, uh, which was uh, very much, uh, in fact, uh, pseudoscience exists in our uh, uh, like uh, patient population as well as sometimes I see even among doctors. Uh, so I was uh, quite critical of it uh, from many years. And uh, but uh, now it, taking a stand, uh, taking a uh, what do you say, uh, a firm belief, even when you look at a personal belief system, uh, all this took some time. And uh, I would say like uh, another person I would uh, like to say who really influenced me was Mr. Srinivas Kakilaya, then uh, Mr. G. Rajshekar. In fact, today, just now I attended a uh, program in his memory, which was conducted in Udupi. So um, these were the people who, in fact, uh, gave me messages of uh, humanism. This is what I would say. Uh, certainly, Dr. Narendra Naik is an inspiration for all of us. Most of the atheists whom I have met, uh, at least online or uh, in person, uh, most of them uh, state that by the time they were in college or by the time they were like mid twenties, uh, they were uh, they had given up all their uh, religious beliefs, and some of them uh, even go back to their school days and say that you know by 10th standard I was already an atheist. But in your case, uh, you mentioned that uh, you have, uh, you know, uh, become an atheist at a relatively advanced stage in your life. Are there many people like yourself uh, or are you more of an exception in this regard? No, I don't know. Like I am yet to come across uh, anybody who is, uh, what do you say, uh, uh, suddenly changed like me. I don't know. 
see certain things i think uh, one of the this one was uh, my readings of shivram karat that was uh, another thing which really influenced me a lot and uh, he was an agnostic uh, if i can say because somewhere uh, he has described himself also to be an agnostic uh then of course my interactions with the people like rajshekar uh, these were the people i mean uh, rajshekar is somebody who is very close to my heart i would uh, i have told many times uh, that uh, uh, if i want to emulate somebody one of the persons would be Dr. Uh, mr g rajshekar so interactions with these sort of people then of course uh, uh one uh, incident uh, i think i had shared uh, in many public occasions also this was regarding we were f- fighting for a particular uh, like a government uh, had uh, given a uh, uh, donation of uh, one mr aji abdullah saheb uh, in 1930 he gave a donation of around 7 acres land in the heart of udupi to the government of karnataka around uh, five years ago this uh, the government uh, at that time by sidaramaya government gave this to a uh, corporate person to start a uh, hospital in the form of public private participation so when i went through the records and when i went through aji abdullah's lives and uh, readings one thing i realized was that uh, he was a very devout uh, muslim having lots of belief in god so when i went through this haji abdullah's life he ended his life also in a very miserable way he uh, had to uh, voluntarily end his life that's what he had to be committed suicide um these were the things which made me think a lot on what is this and see after uh, he died and uh, even after uh, 50 60 years after his death again some good noble deeds he did again it is being thrown into uh, winds somebody else takes over the land so these were this was the one uh, crucial uh, this one which made me think a lot on this so many things were there another thing is the hospital i worked for everybody i wrote a book on him he was a atheist in fact uh, i will say one of the earliest atheist of india in fact when he made a will he had no children he made a will in which he tells that uh, uh, not a single paisa should be used for worship temples uh, and religious uh, functions this is what he writes so when i read all this and uh, he said the entire money which he bequeathed should be used for uh, uh, hospitals then uh, education of the needy so uh, the, uh, i in fact wrote his uh, biography around 4 uh, uh, 4 years ago but i was on it uh, uh, on it for almost 4 5 years and of course rumors were spread about him that uh, during the end of his life he started believing in god and all i didn't find there was as, anything as usual yes uh, th- there was no truth in it so all this uh, probably influenced my thinking a lot uh, in fact uh, that's what they say the books the people around you they actually whether you like it or not uh, they mold you uh, and uh, i was uh, feeling that uh, and I, uh, another thing was my profession uh, i was seeing uh, how patients are looted in the name of religion in the re- name of uh, religious ceremonies see they they very there is a very secular trend when it comes to this looting so you have mentioned that uh, you know a lot of the superstitions in uh, india are around uh, mental health issues it seems that people are not ready to believe that there is a biochemical basis behind uh, you know pathologies uh, of the mind and they go to all the quacks and these uh, babas who perform some uh, rituals and claim to cure them w- what can be done uh, in in this uh, regard by the government or uh, by pe- people uh, rationalists uh, like ourselves see first thing is we have to talk openly about it 
because i will tell you i am one of those persons i had organized a workshop for astrologers this is almost around 15 years back to tell them the scientific basis of uh, uh, i mean whatever you spoke now neurochemical imbalance and all uh, now i have taken a uh, diabolically opposite uh, stand uh, now there is i i openly tell in fact uh, i write a weekly column for a, a local newspaper see i'll tell you one thing uh, like uh, they uh, these psychiatric illnesses are also very peculiar in their presentation okay they will somebody will say in a disease called mania he will say that he has a power of god uh, in a uh, disease called as dissociative possession state uh, a uh, patient may say that he is possessed by evil spirit okay then a person with the depression may say that his horoscope is bad now they start speaking about this sort of thing they'll say grachara dosha sade sat shani all this right so uh, the the symptoms itself will make people believe that it is a curse of god it is curse of naga it is a curse of jinn i was telling you it is secular secular in the sense hindu muslim christian everybody and sometimes they are very secular christians believing in naga dosha hindus believing in some shaitan uh, uh, and going to a church and uh, muslims behaving in horoscope i have seen all this a very peculiar trend is there so now uh, why is this occurring see many of these illnesses remit spontaneously please understand this the psychiatric that, that's why i told you the why uh, uh, because many people even uh, describe psychiatrists are charlatans okay uh, like uh, there is no science which i totally disagree in fact i will tell you uh, it is as scientific as physical medicine and lot of research has very clearly proved studies done on uh, uh, the patients their ct scans their mri scans their pet scans these are uh, uh, instruments by which we study the structure of brain because i am addressing uh, so many common people they should know what is these scans so these scans they have found that there is a structural difference in patients suffering from illnesses uh, major mental illnesses like schizophrenia bipolar disorder severe depression obsessive compulsive disorder these they have also noticed certain neurochemical imbalance and certain abnormalities in blood flow psychiatry and has, also they have high uh, also they have high heritability right yes genetic uh, this one yeah uh, uh, genetic transmission see all these proves that there is a very strong neurochemical basis for psychiatric illness this is what public should be told very clearly this is one mr anna ji ballad i was working very closely with him in my days when i was a uh, believer he asked me one question doctor all these people know they are gullible people they go and say that uh, um, somebody has put some medicine into my stomach and i developed this illness especially for psychiatric illness this is a common belief you see black magic so he was telling i always tell them this example if somebody can really do black magic why can't this black magician go and do black magic to musharraf at that time musharraf was the president of pakistan see i am no why i am telling you this is this is what we need to tell our people convince them that this is all bullshit putting medicine uh, into your stomach somebody doing hypnotism and uh, control controlling your mind again incidentally i will tell you the presentation of schizophrenia somebody will tell somebody uh, has kept a stick in that uh, uh, what is that uh, ashwatha tree uh there is one stick that controls my mind so immediately people think uh, that uh, somebody uh, is uh, controlling the mind from outside so it is actually a symptom of schizophrenia where we call it as delusion of control the beauty is somebody in us will tell that his mind is being controlled by a microchip okay this fellow says it is that uh, stick in the ashwatthamara Whereas this somebody in US will say it is by a microchip. 
and somebody else uh, somewhere will tell something else like but uh, the interpretation is same it is a psychotic symptom so public are gullible they uh, they go by uh, messages they see in tv otherwise why do you think our tv channel so many tv channels everybody is surviving because i will tell you most of these tv channels survive by uh, this uh, jyotishya shastra then announcing uh, about pavadas pavada means something uh, miracle has happened because these are the things which will have trp if i do these sort of programs there will be no trp nobody is interested and they will ask they will definitely tell you there are so many things which science can't explain uh, I, that is why when you told that i should speak uh, with you in this program i said i will speak because see i always use the opportunity i get to propagate certain things which i have learned this is something which was with me throughout i used to question i used to uh, question the existing uh, norms even from my childhood uh, like uh, why i should wear sacred thread why should i prostrate before a swami but see i used to do it and uh, i will tell you very frankly even now somebody elderly earlier i have prostrated before him many of you may laugh at me i don't mind prostrating that's something because this is something which has come for years see i i i i, I am a head of a institution my institution uh, though it's uh, uh, it's in memory of everybody guy it doesn't mean that uh, uh, everything will be like there will be some institutional uh, uh, as a head of the institution i do certain um, uh, things at that time i will tell very clearly i don't believe in all this but uh, if somebody else can do it i'll be very happy but nobody is uh, able to do it i have done it absolutely no this one because i personally feel my values are my values and i will talk about it but who am i to change somebody even when i tell this my patients my patients tell me uh, we will do puja i'll say it's up to you but this is all bogus and i will also tell him don't spend 50000 60000 on a puja because uh, my hospitalization uh, because thanks to my uh, trust my employer it will cost him uh, almost uh, 10% or uh, uh, 20% of the cost he spends on puja i tell him please don't do it but if he still uh, uh, wants to do it i will never tell him oh, because you are doing it i will not give my treatment because it defeats the whole purpose you see i want him to be i want him to get well i want him to imbibe a scientific temper see i have seen how uh, this becomes a little problematic i will tell you uh, these people will take medicine they will do puja and ultimately they will give credit to the puja and i have seen they stop the medicine they relapse then they realize but uh, till then it continues and uh, we were giving a free treatment to a, a place where religious uh, people were running a uh, home for uh, this uh, homeless mentally ill i used to uh, very sincerely go once a month give treatment there but once it uh, uh, came in a local kannada uh, weekly that by religious faith healing their illnesses are getting cured immediately this was even before i became a Uh, humanist so even before i became i wrote a letter to them protesting against this and told this is my last this one you make alternate arrangements i will not participate uh, i wrote to them that uh, since you have claimed in the interview and you have never given i i didn't ask credit for me but credit to the science i practice it is basically because of psychiatric medications they were becoming better this homeless mentally ill and you have totally neglected that So why i am telling you this is this is what happens in our society why did our uh, now why did our governments wake up in 2001 there was a tragedy in a place called as erwadi in fact in every one of my scientific presentation on superstition i put the slides of those 50 plus patients who were charred to death uh, basically what happens is uh, uh, certain people spread these rumors that uh, uh if you go there illness will come down many times they will be giving medicines also otherwise those are diseases which remit spontaneously see bipolar disorder in that a person in mania suddenly 
it can remit any day okay without even treat uh, without any treatments also it is an episodic illness now when that uh, get, uh, to our bad luck our means our uh, scientific community's bad luck when he goes to that darga or that particular temple see it is there in every this one christians talk about kotta hindus talk about chotanikara muslims talk about uh, various dargas there is one darga even uh, near bangalore okay uh, so in fact uh, uh, these were my experiments in the initial day see even now i run that clinic in the same temple premises we are running a de addiction clinic from those days when i was a believer i didn't stop it many people asked me why you have not stopped it i did not stop it because i am giving a message that even those people are dependent on science and again as i told you my personal belief should not affect uh, uh, my institutions uh, this one i even now alternate friday i only go there and give treatment earlier around uh, five years ago i used to visit the temple also inside but i don't go to the temple now i do my work and i come back your attitude towards religious people is uh, like a live and let live uh, kind of approach uh, but uh, uh, there are uh, many atheists who like to parody religion or they like to uh, ridicule uh, the beliefs of uh, religious people and there are others who believe that this kind of approach is uh, or this kind of attitude is actually counterproductive because the more you criticize and the more you uh, ridicule uh, the uh, the stronger the uh, people's belief becomes and the more they defend their beliefs so there is no point in uh, trying to influence uh, believers at a personal level you can uh, give up uh, the beliefs but don't expect others to uh, listen to you so what is your uh... yeah absolutely i subscribe to this idea only i would say like i i stand for my belief but i cannot expect my wife or my son to subscribe to that because they have to learn on their own seeing me in my i mean my life is my example to quote gandhi like many people told me see you are taking such a stand like i also it is not that i don't ridicule i will tell you and i learned from that when in this eclipse comes you know i go and eat food and i put it on facebook and so much of criticism is there so much of uh, this one now i understand because uh, and they use it against you in the uh, to the common man see is uh, like uh, these sort of things come out Uh, these are against uh, these are people who are against our traditions okay these are the people uh, uh, who need to be taught a lesson i have seen even educated people educated doctors lawyers okay commenting that uh, uh, see in many ways you are a role model but this you have done is wrong these sort of things so the lesson i learned is there is no point no point telling them but i do put a scientific article what is a eclipse now what is this uh, i will not stop talking about it just because you don't believe it just because you want to uh, see this is probably one of the reasons why we lost such a noble soul like uh, uh, narendra dabolkar we need people like him who need to uh, in fact uh, this maharashtra andashrad nirmulan samiti is something which is actually very dear to my heart uh i have been following their uh, programs uh, and all see and uh, in a way i think uh, naren naik is trying to do the same thing here like uh, why pe- people like uh, dabolkar and uh, for that matter our own uh, kalburgi were killed it's because uh, these people could not stand the views they propagate Uh, and of course nothing has stopped after kalburgi we have, we have naren naik continuing the tradition i i am sure this tradition shall continue see if you look at i tell these people you look at your own philosophy if you believe your philosophy is true and it was existent and it is not just uh, uh, what do you say stories why did they talk about this charvahaka see uh, charvahaka was a person who was opposing everything which was religious 
so uh, i mean uh, and uh, this is the same thing i tell my atheist brothers also let us be tolerant of their uh, follies we have our belief system we will strengthen it we will try to get more people into it you have been participating in many workshops and seminars uh, on uh, superstition eradication so uh, do you find that after these programs there is a lasting effect on the uh, participants or as soon as they walk out uh, everything is forgotten and uh, the status quo is uh... See, the biggest example is myself i got uh, so this one with narendra naik uh, showing uh, so many things like he showed uh, how uh, he could uh, eat fire and how he could walk on coal i have seen it okay and how he busted this uh, myths of uh, religious people in fact that made me think and uh, in fact immediately after that i told him we will have a program in our hospital we have had it thrice three programs from narendra naik in our hospital uh, so it does have a long lasting effect especially to those people who believe in scientific temper see that's what you do your duty let's try to talk about uh, science let us tell them see i, I usually what i the module i follow is i start off with what are the common beliefs they have then i come to what is the scientific evidence i mean i show them this uh, pet scan uh, ct scan how a normal human being and uh, a person suffering from the illness how they have scientists have studied this then i tell them about the symptoms then i come to the treatments like how neurochemical imbalance when we say neurochemical imbalance when we say electroencephalography eeg waves and how medicines which we use are the same things we use uh, some drugs which are used in treatment of epilepsy are used in treatment of bipolar disorder and antidepressants are uh, drugs which uh, act on the brain and uh, the neurochemicals in the brain and how i see improvement uh, in my patients i explain to them so they do believe it in fact that's the beauty of this module by narendra naik he uh, asks uh, kakilaya to speak on physical illnesses he asked me to talk about mental illnesses then he talks about uh, uh, the uh, what do you say uh, the humbug things that are going on how people gullible people are uh, uh, made to believe how a Uh, chain comes out of uh, this one or how ashes are brought that's from that's why papa used to do all these kind of tricks exactly. right exactly uh, so these sort of things when you tell the youth okay of course that is why when uh, programs are held we have had protests in fact uh, if you ask narendra naik he will tell you public have protested some of these people have protested uh, Uh, about uh, this uh, sort of program saying that we are against uh, these god men uh, we are against this religion see we are not against anybody that's the message i want to give see you raise your voice for your thing we raise our voice for our thing do you think that uh, some of the provi- uh, legal provision like article 295a giving us privilege status to only the one kind of beliefs which is the religious beliefs and uh, section 295a is so vague anybody can be uh, arrested for whatever they write on facebook whatever they write on twitter so do you think that uh, these uh, this provision makes any sense like uh, a special law only for protecting religious uh, beliefs and why should religious beliefs be be protected i think uh, uh, the our constitution was formed in those days where uh, i mean if you look at our country uh, uh, we are uh, definitely uh, we have a lot of importance to religion for that matter if you look at uh, another uh, father of our nation mahatma gandhi was a very deeply religious person uh, if you look at his writings and all i in fact i adore uh, gandhi Uh, and i always feel gandhi should not be criticized because he can be criticized by only those people who have li- led a life like him that is what is my this one very difficult of course you can uh, pick holes in it a lot of things uh, if you look at that particular time there was lot of uh, importance to religion and also this 
uh, maybe at that time it was like uh, uh, the, our constitution is very fair actually it says any religion it doesn't say only this person's religious belief or that person's religious belief because th that was a time where uh, as it is now being used the religion was a tool to if you remember the independence uh, uh, I mean, pre-independence and post, immediately post-independence days, there were a lot of these riots uh, in the name of religion, criticisms. Probably that was why this uh, Section 265A came. That's what I feel. Okay. But um, I mean, uh, maybe now it is being misinterpreted. See, any law, the thing is, uh, ultimately, the rulers can interpret the, any law in any way. Uh, this is the truth. I think, uh, of course, and uh, that is why the beauty of this constitution is we can always bring amendments. So actually, I look forward for a day when a lot of us, uh, like there are countries where there are a lot of people who are humanists, uh, majority are humanists. Probably when such uh, this one comes, maybe a debates and also who knows changes should be brought to see one thing i firmly believe in i'm proud of our constitution though there are uh, may, I mean, there may be a lot of uh, uh, things which can be misinterpreted by these people uh, definitely they have taken care and ultimately you saw even such uh, like arrests they could not continue for long but yes definitely uh, there are some things, these are some things which need to be debated, definitely. Science is compulsory, at least till 10th standard. That means every citizen who has completed schooling has um, at least 10 years of science education behind them. But you find that by the time they reach the age of 30 or 40, they discard all, all the science that they have learned and they believe all kinds of uh, pseudo-scientific things like... Uh, uh, they believe in astrology and they believe in karma. So is there something wrong in the way science is taught in schools or is it because the uh, there is one set of things which is being taught in the school, but then the family environment or the home environment is uh, teaching the opposite. So it all kind of uh, comes in conflict in the person's mind. What is going on exactly? See, my experience is that education has nothing to do with the uh, your practice of science. I have seen, see, around two years ago when they were talking about how, uh, uh, what do you say, bell, ringing a bell or that jagate, there were doctors explaining how virus would be killed by these uh, vibrations. I am not joking. This has come, uh, I, I, it is, I cannot comprehend uh, how uh, somebody trained in uh, who has a master's degree in uh, medicine surgery can talk of this so again as you rightly put it when you criticize it things come that you are against our sanskriti probably yes uh, what is taught and we don't think science uh, one person i should tell and i also ask you those of you who are really interested in Knowing about rationalism, there is another person called as Albert Ellis. He is a clinical psychologist. He has uh, written a lot of books. One of the books is A Guide to Rational Living. It has nothing to do with uh, humanism or anything. But how to think rationally? Uh, certain things I borrowed from him. So now I realize, okay, any particular incident, what can happen? What? Okay, these are the things scientifically, these are the things that can happen. Fine. So, uh, here now what has happened is educated people also are becoming gullible. Another example I will give you. During this lockdown period, I made it a point that uh, my near and dear ones, I should visit them uh, to see if they are in trouble. Because I was seeing that there was a lot of phobia around uh, uh, about uh, COVID and the people avoiding each other. And two of my friends, husband and wife, uh, both are again um, doctors uh, uh, they are uh, almost uh, 60 so uh, when i went there they said no no we have no fear of covid i was very happy then they showed me two powders uh, which uh, increased the immunity now look here uh, i mean 
ignorance is bliss. So this is what I could uh, make out. Now, how do you account for this? How do you account for uh, belief even in uh, modern doctors? Then you will again counter me saying you should you are uh, you are against holistic medicine. You are against uh, this. See, if you go on countering, I can't do anything. But uh, I am telling you, how will you explain somebody who has done MBBS, somebody who has done master's degree, somebody who has done super speciality, still uh, believing there are uh, measures to improve immunity, there are powders which can, uh, powders, you, uh, they were being sold lot of, uh, I mean, you have seen how Indian Medical Association was ridiculed by none other than Baba Ramdev. I have no fear to tell. See, the beauty of science is the same medicine criticized Remdesivir. The same medicine, there are voices of dissent against the vaccine. See, this is the beauty of medicine. That's what I tell my students who come here for postings. The difference between science and your dhar dharmic uh, preaching says science keeps on changing dharmic preachings what your grandfather great grandfather taught same thing is taught to you you always follow science as far as possible follow science in fact one of the biggest stress management tools i tell when i give lectures on stress management is avoid superstition superstition is a cause for a lot of stress but superstition is the word people use to describe other people's uh, weird beliefs. Nobody will call their own beliefs as superstition, right? See, exactly. I agree with this point. I will tell you. That is why when I talk in Kannada, I don't use the word uh, Muda Nambike. Definitely, yes. But uh, yeah, maybe a better word is unscientific beliefs. Again, uh, you can say uh, who, like, see, they... They explain everything scientifically, but uh, definitely uh, these sort of uh, beliefs, which are unscientific, uh, pseudo scientific, we need to uh, dispel. We need to tell them that look by uh, believing in scientific. Uh, this one, like for example, I told you, you know, uh, there are people who believe that uh, uh, the house uh, they live in, that vastu is not good. So much of stress it creates for them because something they build with a lot of love and affection and suddenly somebody puts it to their brain and if one of them believes it in that house, that uh, that's the end of the story. I have seen it happen. For many of my believer friends who have warned me because of the strong belief like this, uh, you may suffer in future. I told them I am already 50. So 50 to 60 is the age where many of us suffer. So don't attribute it to it. Now, if something happens to me, immediately they will say, though I always give example of Naren Naik. See, he is 70. He is so healthy. Okay, despite all these beliefs. Uh, then even uh, these sort of uh, things like you didn't, uh, uh, today as I told you, no, if you don't conduct a particular program, if you don't do a program of your parents, then that... Uh, uh, Bhuta or Pishachi will do something, they will come as a Bhuta and these sort of things ruin your peace of mind. So please, uh, people should understand that biggest stress management to this practicing science. Again, uh, here I would like to say I was uh, very much attracted by uh, Hora to the Baduku. This is by H. Narsimaya. I think uh, people in your Bangalore circle will know more about him. He is one of the first, uh, uh, what do you say, uh, uh, proclaimed atheist. He was that he was a vice chancellor of Bangalore University. He was uh, known uh, for, uh, and of course, Abraham Kovur, I have read his books. I think we should encourage our uh, children. Of course, children are nowadays not at all reading books. Leave alone Abraham Kavur or uh, this one. Maybe now we need to use these sort of medias. That's what I am actually planning using uh, social media uh, to tell them, okay, look, this is the thing. Okay, don't believe this. Of course, uh, when I, the effect will have side effects. Many people may start hating me, believers and all. But that should not prevent us. But let us not get into what do you say, that uh, dishum dishum with them will not go into that. 
but uh, let us tell facts that's what i believe in so that brings me to my last question sir uh, which is always the same for uh, every interview what is your message for rationalists uh, who want to do more so first thing is uh, be vocal be vocal about uh, uh, about your beliefs you have all the right to believe in what you are believing but at the same time let us not uh, try to argue uh, like I, i do argue with my few of my staff okay who are very religious and all i make fun of them they make fun of me uh, when i like uh, even some of them come with the prasad and all i tell them uh, see you are giving to the wrong man then i ask them what did they, your god do but i will never come in the belief saying no no don't give me prasad i will not take it so this is uh, in maybe in the in initial days of my this one i used to do it criticize how much you spent on the puja and all i tell my patients like most of them are poor so what i mean to tell you is the message is uh, uh, let us allow them to coexist let them uh, but give them our peace of mind that okay this is what science says we have to come to every issue let us practice it not just uh, what do you say preaching let us practice it in that's the beauty of uh, dr narendra naik because he practices whatever he tells this is what i have seen uh, him very closely whatever he tells he practices it and uh, he stands by it he is a role model for all of us and uh, let us have more programs in fact where we can have uh, uh, uh talks on scientific basis of uh, psychological illnesses see even in the name of science there are lot of pseudo sciences like i am sure uh, narendra naik must have talked about this uh, brain mapping and some gadgets they bring and say that will cure the magnetic gadgets then some watch you wear and it will reduce bp sugar these see and uh, now there is this food industry like uh, uh drinking some uh, soya bean uh, milk and saying that you will lose weight uh, so many stupid things occur in the name of science also let's don't think uh, it is only the religious people who are doing it even uh, there are many people uh, in the scientific community who are doing all this let, let our yardstick be same let us use this yardstick in a right way let us stand for our uh what do you say beliefs when we start uh, standing for our beliefs i only hope that in future we'll get lot of people who youngsters who will stand by these beliefs and i think uh, your uh, channel by doing this uh, sort of interviews it is in the right direction um uh, I, this is my message